Welcome back to East by West Farms, where we grow what we eat and we eat what we grow. In this video, we're gonna make a duck brooder. I will make a brooder out of construction grade lumber. About a year ago, I probably would have just taken some two by fours, screwed them together and voila, we're done. I'm convinced that well-performed joinery lasts a lot longer than uh, stuff that's just put together with screw. I'm doing mortise and tenon joinery for the uh, major constructions or for the major structural parts. I uh, let in the horizontal uh, supports into the uh, legs, so that gives some really sturdy uh, construction. A little plane helps, it's a block plane to just cut the edges and uh, do some basic smoothing. You always need a hammer. We've got a saw here, you know, that's a cross cut saw, also a tenon saw that I've um, been using, a really cheap saw from the Home Depot. This saw here, it's a rip saw that uh, got from the Home, home Depot. We need a square, it's a construction square, I think it's called speed square. Some glue helps. A set of chisels. This chisel is made, the, the chisel holder, holder is made from off-cut 2x4s. I do have a uh, diamond sharpener that is 600 grit, 400, 300, 200 grit. Uh, I think we got this from Harbor Freight for just a few dollars. Then I've got some leather straps to get the final uh, edge on the sharpening on, on the chisels. Uh, it's just some belt that I cut up and glued on a piece of 2x4. And then I didn't mention there's a marking gauge to mark out the joinery. The next thing I need to do is make a door. I cut the uh, pieces to length. There are two, three horizontal and two vertical pieces. I need to join them together. So the way to do is to do mortise and tenons in the horizontal bars and then mitered mortise and tenons on the top and bottom rail. I could measure and see where it goes, but I'll just do it here like um, freehand. That's about the middle here. Let me smack this in. Then I adjust my uh, mortise gauge based on where the chisel fell. All I need to do is to adjust adjust my fences. How wide do I need to make this mortise? Well, it's exactly the width of the of the rail here. So this goes in this way, this goes in that way. Let's start here. Here we go. Transfer the measurement to the other side. Surface is not very straight, which is okay for a chicken coop. I reference everything on the side, on the face of the of the board. Here we go. Let's mark it out. I can see it better. This goes. This goes. Okay, one side is done. The only thing I need to do is take the reference, align the two boards, transfer the marks from one board to the other. Here we go. Mark my reference plane. for the length of the, mor of the mortise. Yep, 
mark out the mortise from the reference. And I always like to highlight the, the, the lines. Next I need to mark out the tenon and mitre joints on the top and the bottom. For that I use a smaller chisel versus four, that's one quarter width. Take the chisel whack it in here so I've got a mark on the width of the chisel then I take my mitre gauge and adjust it and the other thing is I'm gonna make a mitre this way okay same thing on the other side Next thing is to do the, the tenon, the micro tenon on these two pieces. I know the boards are one and three quarters inch wide, so I'll mark that out here and here. Transfer it over there. Transfer it over there. Here we go. Next thing is to cut the mortise. Cutting mortise is pretty easy. Um, it's really just a hole that goes through the wood. I've got the chisel. When I marked out the mortise, I made sure that the mortise is exactly the same width as the chisel. Just take the chisel, take a hammer and carve out the hole through the wood. The key when mortising is to stay relaxed, right? not, not to just use brute force. For some reason that makes the mortising just a lot easier. So relaxing the wrist. Number one, you find really find the exact position of the chisel. Number two, you relax. Notice how the chisels just jump out of the mortise when you cut them the right way. I cut all the mortises, the next thing is to cut the tenon. The way how I usually do that is I start on one, on one side, on one corner. I'll make sure that I'm just a hair outside the line, so I want to keep the line on the inside. Here we go, flip it over. Cut the other side, square it up. You see people cutting the shoulders first. 
I don't want to do that. The reason for that is it's, it's very easy to cut further than the shoulder. So cutting into the tenon. That will weaken the tenon quite a bit, especially when you have narrow tenons, that's easy to, to have the can, tenons break off. So if I cut along the shoulder first, uh, on the, uh, the cheek of the tenon first, if I overcut a little bit, it doesn't really matter an awful lot, it doesn't weaken the tenon. And when I cut the, uh, the, 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 the shoulder, I can stop right here where the, um, the cheek cut is. And now I'm going to take my crosscut saw. I could just use my rip saw, no big deal. Crosscut saw and cut across the, uh, the cheek. Oh, the shoulder, not the cheek, the shoulder. I like to bevel the edge of the tenon a little bit. It makes it easy to get it into the mortise. Don't have to. Okay. Not bad. The tenon is supposed to have a tight fit, but not too tight. Especially with pine, if it's too tight, pine splits easily. The next tenon are these mitre tenon. So on this tenon, mitre tenon, I have one, two, three cuts to make. One that defines one side of the tenon and then two define two cheeks of the tenon. I do this before I cut the mitre so I don't need to transfer the line later on. That saves a bit of, uh, saves a bit of time and makes it more precise. And cutting the tenon is just like before. The next thing, and that's probably the hardest of all the steps in building the store, is to cut the miters. And that needs to be precise because if it's wobbly or offline or off, off the mark, then the miters ain't gonna close and it just doesn't look too good. And like always, it's important to relax, let the saw do the work. The only thing I'm doing is reguiding guiding the saw back and forth. Okay, so I'm done here up to the tenon. Let me cut this a little bit more. Here we go. Flip it around. And again, the saw is doing the work. It's, if it doesn't, it's time to sharpen the saw. Here we go, that's gone. Now the only thing that's missing that I need to take off is this little triangle here. And that's easy enough to just flip it this way. I do have my reference marks on, e on each side, that's good. First thing to do is the middle tenon. I get some glue on here. Well cut joinery should fit without glue. But I'm not that good so I'm I'm still learning. Okay, that goes in here. That goes in here. That's a decent fit. Let me persuade it to get in. Yep. Okay. Not too bad. Then I put the side pieces on. Okay. Reference is here. Okay, not too bad. Make some room for the wedges. Two on each tenon.
Uh, I don't even need to wait until the glue is done, is, is set. I need to make another support. I think I'll just do it one by one that I used to lift the roof up a little bit. I'll make a bird's mouth joint in here. The frame is done, the roof frame is done. I put the hardware cloth in now. I'm using a hardware cloth that's, uh, I think it's a quarter inch mesh, galvanized, so it lasts for a little bit. And I'm just stapling this onto the wooden frame with this, uh, that electric stapler. I cut a sheet of plywood, I put a tar paper on, wrapped it around the edges. I'm not sure if that's the way how we're supposed to do that or what, but um, I, I guess it's gonna work. Uh, the tar paper is left over from the chicken coop, so we're recycling and reusing things. Uh, did an overlap so the water can, can run down. Then we have some of the metal roofing left over from the chicken coop. That is not enough for this for this roof, unfortunately. I do have some other leftovers. Those are tar shingles. Well, and I guess it becomes very clear that this is not enough. So we'll have to leave it as it is right now. We moved the duck coop to its final location. That's a platform that's right next door to the single white outside. I need to put a latch on the door and that's easy enough to do. Other than that, it's pretty much done and ready to uh, get the hatchlings in. We do have a economic chicken brooder that's made out of two by four that I cut in half. Uh, lumber prices uh, dictate that we want to save some money and it is really sturdy. I have some hand cut joinery, here's a through tenon, some uh, mitered tenons on the corners. So that should last for some time. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a thumb up, that helps us out to keep going. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. If you want to follow our journey with the East by West Farms, please hit the subscribe button so you get an update every time we post a new video.